Can you see the problem here? Horses don't float in lava while riding them. I've given my horse fire resistance. Going over water, we see the expected behavior of floating. But when we try to go into lava, even with fire resistance, we're sinking to the bottom. When a living entity is traveling in a fluid, there's a specific check to float in water while it's being ridden. We're going to inject some of our own logic after this method is called. We're targeting the travel in fluid method, and we're injecting after the call to travel in lava. Now with our logic, we can go over water, and then over lava as well. You can unleash an iron golem while it's aggressive towards you. A naturally occurring iron golem. Okay, now he's targeting us. And we're still able to lead him around. Let's look at what's different in Wolf. Can be leashed is checking, not is angry. Following the layers of abstraction, we can see that in the mob class, can be leashed is only checking if this mob is not an instance of enemy. That means with the default behavior, only these mobs are disallowed from being leashed. In the Iron Golem class, we can see that melee attack goal is being used. When this goal starts, set aggressive is set to true. We're going to inject our own logic to also make sure that the mob is not aggressive. I'm trying to right click with the lead now, but nothing's happening, and he's going to kill me. Oh man, I need that log. Wait. Consumable items in the offhand are used when taking the item from a shelf with an empty hand. What's happening here with this interaction result consume? Here they're checking, did we remove an item from the hotbar to make space for the item that we're swapping out from the shelf? So this call would return false because we didn't have to swap anything. As a side effect, this consume activates the snowball. I didn't know about the feature behind this bug, but bone mealing some blocks, more particles appear. We see that a lot more particles are being emitted than we really expect. We have a couple things to look at. We're going to start at bone meal item, go to netherrack block, come back to bone meal item, go to level event handler. When bone meal is used on a block, and we're calling to grow block, check to see if the block is bone mealable, and we perform the bone meal logic. That logic is implemented on netherrack block, which implements bone mealable block. Here, we're immediately changing the block. Three might seem like a magic number, but it's actually coming from the block class. We can see the integer here, update all. After we bone mealed the block, and it was updated to the new block, then we're actually calling to a new level event. You go to the class for level event, you can see it here, particles and sound plant growth. So we're calling to bone meal item, add growth particles with that position. So remember that the block was updated. So now it's actually checking against nilium. Inside of nilium block, we can see get type is returning neighbor spreader here. This one's interesting. The end portal doesn't work if entered quickly after exiting another portal. So I actually know the reason behind this. There is a portal cooldown for entities when they're actually transitioning from dimensions. Let's go, Jeff. Um. Oh, seated parrots fly towards the player when leashed. Uh, what's our expected behavior? Well, that doesn't really look right either. It's not even necessarily hard to implement this. We already have something for checking against is in sitting pose. I would put it here to make sure the entity is not sitting, but that's personal decision. There are plenty of other bugs to get into, and I don't have the time to get into every single one of them. I already made a video in the past for setting up a mod development environment so that you can look through this a lot more easily. I didn't mention in the past that using this gen sources with vine flower or one of these other ones if you prefer can actually make this search process a lot easier. It takes a lot of time to look through Minecraft's code base, even when looking for a specific bug trying to find something random like I was able to do at the end of the last video, that was purely by chance. But I did feel really bad seeing this kind of comment. They didn't feel like I was living up to the title of the video. I wasn't showcasing a deep enough explanation of some of the bugs, or they expected that, that I would go into it more in depth with the bugs. There is so much to look at at this point. Um, if you are truly interested in trying to find bugs in Minecraft, this is absolutely able to be done yourself. I have this whole video on how to look at the code to actually look at this code, the exact same code that I'm viewing myself for this video. If that's something that interests you, please go watch the last video to actually understand how I set up my development environment, and you'll be able to look through the code the same way that I am. And you can reference Mojira and these MC issues to actually try to identify a bug for yourself and suggest a fix for it. I do apologize. I hope this has been a step in the right direction. I might try to go even deeper into bugs at some other point. I don't have the time for it right now. I do apologize for that. Does it make sense for a dolphin to give you dolphin's grace when it can't see you? In dolphin.class, we can see the swim with player targeting field actually uses dot ignore line of sight. This isn't really a bug, but more of a weird side effect. Nautiluses get damaged over time by dry out damage. But if I summon one in, air supply is decreasing over time. When it hits negative 20, they get hurt and it resets and goes back. We're still using the same air supply system as a, as a typical entity. And if we hover over said air supply, you see this is coming from entity here. Dolphins also dry out over time, but it takes much longer. Dolphin class also has a typo for set moistness. Curse of Vanishing doesn't work when the item is equipped on an armor stand. Here I have an item with Curse of Vanishing. We put it on our armor stand. And when we punch it, we get the item back. 
we go to Broken by Player, here we see the armor stand is actually dropping each item from the equipment slot. Glass bottle versus the shears. Inside of Beehive Block, we can see the logic behind the interaction. 